Hello there guys and welcome back to Let's Learn Civilization. Get straight on with the next turn. Things are going quite well at the moment. Um, our wonders are moving around because I'm sure the last time I played this game that wonder was over there and um, Christ the Redeemer was over here. You will notice that sometimes, yeah, because the Pentagon was over there and the Leaning Tower of Pizza was it. Pizza? Pizza was here. So yeah, things do tend to move around a little bit. Um, so Greece and Egypt have now made peace, which is a good thing. America remains host. Well, we knew that was going to happen anyway. We're in a golden age, which is really good. So, what's going on? Nantes needs to build something. I think we'll go for the police station, because I'm not going to have everywhere building spaceship parts. At the end of the day, there's only six parts to build. We will have a spaceship factory built at Cardiff, however. And we'll move on to the next turn. Not too bothered about building the Great Firewall at the moment. It would be nice to do it, and possibly would, if I had a great engineer to use to do that. Uh, but the way I see it at the moment, there isn't really um, enough attempts to steal technology from me at the moment. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, Shaka has declared war against Bismarck. Well, I think our defensive patch has expired, so I don't have to get involved in that. But... Um, Germany's probably, well, Germany does have the largest army at the moment, so if anyone's going to be able to deal with uh, Shaka, it's going to be Germany right now. Cork have finished what they were producing. There's really no point in them going for the spaceship factory. Let's get these constabularies out of the way where we can. Uh, not that it matters now. I don't think we're going to be able to get the National Intelligence Agency. Uh, it'd be nice if we could, but there's really no point. Um... Dublin has finished its spaceship factory. I suppose we could go for the Great Firewall in Dublin because it would give um, all the other civ cities in civilization a 25% reduction to enemy spy effectiveness. And it does um, negate the tourism bonus from other players' internet technology. Not that anybody has got that far just yet. How far away are we if we wanted one? to purchase a great engineer yeah 4000 so maybe we won't be doing that anytime soon so yeah we'll go for the great uh, firewall in dublin what i was thinking is wait until the apollo program's finished do the great firewall here and use a great engineer uh, but it really seems pointless a uh, fair few turns away from getting one so we'll build it in dublin we won't get the 99.9% .9 defense uh spy defense bonus in edinburgh but at least we will get one somewhere douglas i think we will build a spaceship factory at douglas we might not build spaceship parts there but it will give us extra production it's only going to take five turns pretty pointless building one at glasgow to be quite honest let's go for the stadium and carry on working with that happiness let's get that happiness up as much as we can so as you can see now in this little area of Glasgow, any boats that we have in this inner area here, the only way we can get them out is to actually pass through Greece's borders. And Greece, if Greece have got closed borders, we won't be able to get out, but we can actually shortcut through the city. So that's one of the reasons why it's nice to have cities on a single, uh, single thickness piece of land. So this turns about over. Not seen an awful lot going on from the other civilizations. Not even an awful lot going on with barbarians, to be quite honest. And for the first time in quite a while, it's a turn where I actually don't have anything to do. Nothing's really going on. There's nothing that requires my attention. Nantes is going to grow on the next turn, which is very nice. Five more turns for Dublin to grow. Ten for Edinburgh, ten for Cardiff. So we have still got some growth to go. Got a good healthy amount of gold coming in per turn now, 264 gold per turn. Which means if we do get attacked, we've got a good way to produce an army quite quickly. And we've got a few units on the board, nothing particularly major, but it's useful nonetheless. Nothing else that we can really upgrade at the moment. Everything we've got that we are using is pretty much as upgraded as it's going to be. There were a few units down here. Uh, we could upgrade this cavalry to um, 
tanks, which we probably will do. There's no reason why not. We'll go and have a look down here uh, shortly as well. See if there's any barbarians hiding. Got a feeling there might be. Um, trade route from Dublin, which was previously... Let's minimise down my cities because I don't need that anymore. Um, where were we going to previously? Uh, Athens for 12. It's probably not a bad thing. Um, can't see any city-states. I think they're probably still embargoed. Uh, Athens for 12. Yep, let's carry on doing that then. Uh, yeah, we've got enough religious pressure from Voltology to keep that working quite well. On to the next turn. So even though I had a couple of things to do there, it wasn't a, an amazing amount of stuff to have to deal with. So one of the city-states has declared war on Shaka. That's because it's now Germany's ally. Okay. One of the things I want to do on the next turn as well, quickly, just have a look at the espionage panel and see if any of my spies in city-states can either cause a coup or if they need to move out somewhere else. So, there we go. I have completed the Apollo program. I am the first civilization to do so, which is every time somebody does something significant like completes the Apollo program or the Manhattan Project, um, it will appear there. So, I'm... Rigging the election in Genoa, which is an American-sympathised city. In Florence, I'm currently their ally, so I might as well move him from Florence and put him somewhere else. Uh, let us go to uh, Malacca. Why not? Choose production. Edinburgh. What are we going to do? Well... Hmm. Is it worth doing that? Well, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to build the spaceship factory here. And the reason we're going to build the spaceship factory here is because... Uh, oh, no, because we could build the Hubble Space Telescope here, couldn't we? We're going to go for the Hermitage. But in order to build the Hermitage, we need a Senate Hall in Glasgow. Well, that's not a problem because we can just buy that, or at least we should be able to. Uh, currently working on the stadium. Can't see the Senate Hall there. It's because we don't have an amphitheatre. So purchase the amphitheatre, purchase the cellid hall, and then we go back to Edinburgh, do the hermitage, that will give us some additional culture bonuses, and then by the time satellites is finished, we'll be able to start building uh, the Hubble Space Telescope there as well. We'll get that done. Uh, Cardiff is going to go for a broadcast tower. So let's try and do as much as we can to bump up our culture at the moment. Let's carry back on going to Gnosis, or however it's pronounced. Yeah, I am actually terrible at geography, and most of my geographical knowledge of the world uh, comes from civilization. So, there are a few cities that I just haven't heard of. So, apologies to any of my viewers who either live there, speak the native language, or know the cities well. Um, I try and avoid pronouncing the names of cities if I think I'm going to get them totally wrong but there are just some cities that I look at and go looks familiar but I don't recall how it's how it's pronounced so just one of those things I'm afraid you're just gonna have to deal with it so Alexander has declared war on Germany oh there we go all right let's move these tanks out let's see if there's any barbs down here no it doesn't look like there is that was a bit of a shame I was hoping to go and blow them up with a big tank but never mind Nancy's done whatever that was doing um, I think they can have a spaceship factory, actually. Pointless doing it at Cork. Let's go for that police station. And we've, uh, we have arrived here. So, let's keep an eye on things. Can't do an awful lot, unfortunately, with this submarine. Um, if we had a nuclear submarine, we could start bombing them from, from, the, uh, from further away. But it was more just to put it over there and keep an eye on them, to be honest. So, we'll have the next turn. Pretty much everybody is at war with everybody else, so... Ah, right, okay, so... Do we have anything else that you could use? No, that's a shame. How about we get rid of the five gold per turn and you give me copper? Good. Because five gold per turn isn't really a great deal, and that copper gives me an extra four happiness. Much better deal doing it that way around. On to the city-states already. 
Still a massive area here on the minimap in the middle of the uh, land that I haven't been able to uncover yet. Although, um, we get satellites, and the good thing about satellites is... ba, -ba It reveals the entire map. Um, did I random this or the map? Obviously, we're playing on a Pangea. There's a, there's a very large body of water in the middle. Um, this is always embarrassing as well. If you don't know the layout of the map, you find water and go, Oh, I found the sea. And you build a uh, you build a city on the water because you think, oh, I can build a navy and explore the world. And then you realise that you're stuck in the middle of a big lake and you can't actually go anywhere, which is a little embarrassing. It does have its uses, of course. You do have access to things like oil and fish and whales and stuff like that if they're in the area. And, of course, you can use it to make water trade routes with city-states and other cities. But not as useful as actually having a coastal city on on the outside edge so we can actually have a decent look now at the territory of the zulus this is probably well this is their original starting area because there's their capital this area here used to belong to india and all of this was uh, was taken away from them uh, we've got this random city down here which uh just dusseldorf it is actually a, a german founded city don't know how they got all the way down there uh, we've got portland here which of course was one of the american cities that has been captured and they've got st louis and buffalo which are quite new and small cities america's te uh, territory is a little bit larger than i thought it was they seem to be doing quite well there you know a few more little cities that they've um put over here there's detroit can't see any explosions or hear any gunfire so that's good um Got a few more cities here for the Zulus. Rio de Janeiro, obviously we are getting into the old Brazilian territories here that they uh, they stole from them. So that's good, that's the entire map uh, revealed at least. We'll now move on to nanotechnology. This will give us, actually no, we're going to go on to atomic theory first. Um, because this will give us uh, the ability for our uh, uh, science academies to give us an extra two science per turn. So let's go on to that. Douglas can do its uh, broadcast tower. These tanks can't really do anything. They were just looking for barbarians. Didn't find any, which is a little bit sad. And then we will... Oh, unit needs orders. Yeah, I thought it would be you. You are just going to stay there for the time being. And then when the Hermitage is completed at Edinburgh, we'll do the Hubble Space Telescope there. Which will be very, very useful for us. Now, you might think that, um, you know, why sh I shouldn't do that. I should build, a get on with it and build a spaceship factory. Well, I should, but if I build a Hubble Space Telescope, I'll get a free spaceship factory anyway. So, it kind of balances itself out. But uh, it won't take as long to build all the spaceship parts now. That We've still got more than 100 turns to do it. So, it is very, very possible. I'm just going to select a unit there so it doesn't keep snapping me back to that submarine every time. Yeah, a unit still does need orders. Uh, shoot, guys, that's fine. You go back onto alert. Go back up here and click that general again. Otherwise, we'll have the same problem we did last time. It'll keep taking me down to those guys at the bottom. So, America's making friends with city-states again. And, well, so is Germany. Well, Germany's making peace with city-states. Um, Zulus are making peace with city-states. Now, Zulus play a, a very uh, aggressive game. They've taken a lot of city-states out so far. Our happiness is now up to 45 as well, which is really good. So, we still have fog of war, of course. The um, satellites have revealed the clouds, but we still can't see individual units in the area. So, this means that it is possible for barbarians still to be able to spawn. This eastern area of the map, where myself, Greece, Germany, Egypt and America is, is quite heavily populated. But once you get down to this sort of southeastern corner where the uh, Zulus are, even though they're spread out quite a lot, there's still quite a good area that isn't, um, isn't actually claimed at the moment. So there is building space over there. Not that it's going to make any difference, of course. So Edinburgh has finished... Uh, the Hermitage. We are going to go for the Hubble Space Telescope. It will take a little while, but we do get two, f two free great scientists for doing it, which makes it well worth it. Um, Cardiff has finished its production. 
So, Cardiff is going to build the SS Cockpit, and we can produce the first part of our spaceship. If you actually look here, you can see the uh, launch platform for the rocket, and as we bring parts of the... And, and this will appear wherever you build the Apollo program. And as we start to bring parts of the rocket into Edinburgh and assemble them, they will start to appear on the launch pad there. So let's go on to the next turn. We are really getting into the wind-up stages of this game now. I would say, unless something really drastic happens that I wasn't expecting, that completely blindsides me, I would expect to win this game and probably, probably within the next couple of videos. I mean, it does still take a few turns just to get the rest of the research and build the remaining parts, but... I think I'm in a very, very strong position to win now, going for this uh, this science win. Uh, back to my turn, and again, it's one of those turns where I can't really do anything, so we'll go straight on to next turn. Now, what you do find is if you are going for a domination victory, or even if you're at war with somebody, you hardly ever get turns where you're doing nothing. You spend a lot of time micromanaging units, building units, moving units around, getting into position, defending, attacking. And you can have a single turn. I mean, obviously my turns, some of my turns take a long time because I'm going through and showing you guys things on the interface or explaining what I'm doing. And there's the great firewall. But a lot of turns are usually relatively quick. But if you're playing a game where there's a lot of fighting going on, um, turns can take absolutely ages they really really can um is there anything else worth building over here not really what i will do though is i'm going to make some paratroopers just so i can show you guys how these work because paratroopers have quite a nice mechanic actually they're very very useful um when you're fighting so what I probably will do at some point is, once I finish this game, I will do another game of Civ and go for a, you know, we'll random it, we'll get a different civilization, uh, we'll try and go for a different victory type, and, you know, there is sometimes it's convenient to go to war, sometimes it isn't. In this particular case, it probably wasn't. What I might do is do the game on a slightly easier difficulty level, just so I can try and go through and show you guys everything that I've sort of missed in, in this playthrough. Douglas has finished whatever Douglas was doing. Uh, we will go for... So you can see we, we have mobile SAM, so they're very, very good against uh, aircraft. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to build an airport at Douglas. And there is a reason for doing this. I have a plan. It might be something that I end up showing you guys a few videos away. But uh, we'll do that anyway. We'll go on to next turn. Open borders with Greece. I don't have a problem with doing that. So there's a lot of lot of Germans coming in around through the uh, through the top here. Egypt and Germany are now friends. I honestly don't think the Zulus are as much of a threat now as I thought they were going to be. So we've discovered atomic theory, and now you see we have all these things that have appeared here, which are basically uranium deposits that are around the map. Already our workers are on it, because they're just that quick. How amazing is that? So we've got that. We can adopt a social policy. So we're going to go for this one, scientific resolution, uh, revolution. So it boosts science gained from research agreements by 50%. Now I don't really do a lot of uh, research agreements anymore, but um, it will also give me 10% science while the Empire is happy and unlocks building the porcelain tower and adopting... Oh, no, sorry, that's the starting one. But adopting all the policies will give me a free technology and allow me to purchase great scientists with faith, which is what I actually want. So we're going to do that. I get a free tech of my choosing. Well, let's go for nanotechnology. Now we can build the SS Stasis Chamber and XCOM squads. Um... Which I am going to do. XCOM squads are actually an upgrade to um, paratroopers. I believe they are anyway. Uh, we will build an XCOM. I'm going to buy an XCOM squad actually. Um, now who's down near the Greek border? Nantes. I'm going to build an airport here. There's a reason for this. Um, choose production at Cork. 
we could go for the Manhattan Project here. Why not? We might as well do it. I'm not going to use it because I'm not going to not going to use nukes. But we're going to go for nuclear fission anyway because that will give us nuclear power plants, which um, gives us extra production and happiness. Let's get on with that next turn. And I still forgot to buy an XCOM unit. XCOM units do pretty much the same thing that power troopers do. They just do it slightly better. And the XCOM units are one of the kind of future tech units in the game anyway. So as soon as it comes around to my turn again, which it will do shortly, I will buy one of them somewhere. So, okay, let's go to Edinburgh and I will purchase an XCOM squad. They're quite expensive. Instantly get a promotion. Let's just give them shock. And can't really move them on this turn because they're kind of, you know, sort of buried in the way. Glasgow is going to do a constabulary. Dublin is going to do... What are you going to do, Dublin? Let's get the airport going. We don't really need to rush science or, or gold now. We're going to do it quite nicely. So we've got some paratroopers here. As you can see, we can upgrade them to an XCOM squad. So yeah, XCOM squads are the upgrade. So what can you do with paratroopers? Well, as you can see, they're an infantry unit. They fight like an infantry unit. They have a base movement of two. They're not ranged, so they do fight in melee. Um, but what they have here is this ability called paradrop. Now... Power drop can only be used when it uses up all your movement. Uh, so I can't do it now because I've moved them, but I just wanted to move them out of the city so I, I could I could show you guys what they look like. Uh, when inside friendly territory, units may power drop up to nine tiles away. After doing so, it will still have uh, movement to perform other actions. That is quite limited, though. Uh, the movement to perform other actions, basically what it can do is it can... Um, it can pillage, but I don't think it can move or fire. I can't quite remember. We'll find out on the next turn, though, because I will demonstrate. Which is, is quite nice, what they can actually do. So move on to the next turn. It's good that I can show you, you guys these little things here, because we're at that stage of the game where not an awful lot's going on now. We're just waiting for things to resolve and stuff to happen. So we're already on to the city-state's turn. We'll soon be on to the barbarians, and there shouldn't be much going on with barbarians anymore. So, as you can see... Let's have a look. Ranked players in their military power. Still Shaka at the top. I'm third, which is really strange. I thought Bismarck was uh, second, or uh, was top on military power. That's very strange. Let's have a look at the demographics again there. Uh, soldiers. No, Shaka still has the most soldiers. We are third. That's very, very strange, isn't it? Anyway, so we have these power troopers. So what I can do is I can hit the power drop button. And as you can see, I have some spaces where they can drop. And some spaces where they can't. So anywhere within... It's a little bit difficult because my flipping border colour is this light blue colour. Which is the same colour as the, uh, the power drop marker. But you can see this other sort of pale blue outline which is always pale blue so if you're playing a uh, civilization other than uh, the Celts it, you'll actually be able to tell the difference between them but what you literally do is anywhere within nine tiles you just give a click and they will come in via plane they will power drop in and land on that tile now they've got one movement left so they could make a one space movement and they can pillage, but they can't attack. Um, that's the only sort of downside they have. They can't actually attack. We will upgrade them to XCOM units though. Because, you know, why not? We've got another XCOM unit here. And we are going to move them out of the city. So, as you can see, they're exactly the same. They've got more strength. I mean, it's quite an upgrade. I think it was 65 uh, for the... Um, paratroopers, but it's 110 for the XCOM squads. And they do exactly the same thing, except instead of it being within 9 tiles, it's within 40 tiles. And that does include enemy territory. So, providing you are within your own territory, 
you can power drop somewhere up to 40 tiles away. Again, that's something I'll demonstrate as well. So Cardiff has now finished the SS cockpit. You can actually see it. In, you, know, you can see the uh, the vehicle there with the um, cockpit on it, and it's indicated by this little upside down triangle because it's it's technically a civilian unit. So we will build the stasis chamber here as well. Why not? A unit needs orders and it is the cockpit. So if I start to move it along the road, just so you can get a better look at it. So there you go. You can, that's the cockpit for the ship on the back of the trailer. We can get that all the way into the city on a single turn because railroads are brilliant. And then when it's in the city, you'll see we have this button here, which is add to spaceship. Contribute a part to the Alpha Centauri spaceship. And if I click that... The vehicle disappears and you can now see we've got the first part of the spaceship here on the uh, landing pad. So those guys can't really do anything else on that turn. I'm going to leave them there for now. We'll go on to the next turn. And again, for people wondering if... I did mention it in an earlier video, but you may not have seen that one. The reason that you, you get XCOM squads randomly turn up in this game is because uh, Civilization is made by uh, Sid Meier and Firaxis. And it's Firaxis that uh, made the newer XCOM Enemy Unknown game. So they currently hold the license to the XCOM franchise, or at least part of the license to the XCOM franchise, uh, along with 2K. And that's why they are in here. Which is quite a nice little uh, nod to the fans, and it's it, it's a it's a good little bit of future tech, I think. It's a shame I can't find any barbarians or anyone to fire at because they do actually have laser pistols, which is which is quite cool. But sadly, there aren't really any barbarians around, which is which is a little bit annoying. So Shekka's um, plotting against Washington. We'll we'll share the intrigue with him. Um, he's still not going to be our friend, but you know we don't really care. So. We've got our XCOM soldiers. We can now get them to power drop. And the distance they can power drop, because you can power drop into enemy territory as well, is um, quite far away. I mean, possibly this far? Or is that too far? Sure, that was within 40 tiles. Maybe not. Maybe that's not quite within 40 tiles. Although it looks like it is. I think it may be only within territory that we can actually see. That's probably what is problematic about it. If I could see the tile, I could probably land them in it. Obviously, I don't want to land them in a tile that belongs to somebody else because that would put us at war. But as you can see, they are right up here next to Edinburgh. And I could go down to somewhere like here next to Glasgow. And they actually get dropped in via a Sky Ranger. And uh, they drop in there with their jetpacks. So they are an absolutely brilliant unit, and again, it only uses one of their uh, one of their movement, so they can pillage uh, and they can move afterwards as well. So they're a really cool unit to have. Uh, got another caravan here, and that was doing something previously with somebody somewhere, but uh, Berlin for fourteen. So let's carry on with that, and. Uh, of course, we could all, always move these guys as well. Looks like uh, Greek City is taking a bit of a pounding. Can't quite tell where that's coming from. It could be Germany. But I don't really see enough to uh, to know what's going on there. Um, do I have open borders with Germany? Thought I did. But I don't have any spies in their capital. So I can't really see what's going on in Germany at the moment. Which means there isn't really a safe way for me to get in there. Oh well, would have been nice to have dropped in. See what was going on. But, uh, never mind. Not all that bothered. So, we'll put those guys on standby. We'll go on to the next turn. And I think what I will do is I'll play through the next turn as usual. Get up to the point where I can't do anything and then end the video there. And then hopefully within a video or two, we will have tied up this game and finished with a scientific victory. Yeah, Alexander and Bismarck have made peace, so I would assume that that city was actually getting attacked by the Germans. Um, they haven't lost it, though, and they haven't given it away, as far as I can tell. It doesn't look like they've traded away any of their cities. Barbarian camp that used to be there, that's got to be gone. It's within two tiles of a city. Surely it's not there anymore. Um, choose a production at Dublin. Well, what can we do at Dublin? Is there anything useful we can build here? Probably not. Let's build walls, though. I mean, we haven't done that. 
start doing all the basic stuff just for points more than anything now. Um, let's go for the stable here. And one of the other things I wanted to do, I wanted to purchase something else. I wanted to purchase a mobile Sam, one because I wanted to show you what they're like. Um, but also, I can't do it on this turn anyway. Uh, how long is it going to be for that airport to finish? Um, no, it's going for a constabulary. Oh, it wasn't there that was building the airport, it was Nantes, and that's still four turns away. So I can show you that in a few turns' time. Um, but that's pretty much all I can do here at the moment. Yeah, I can't move that, Sam. Mobile Sams basically have a bonus versus aircraft and helicopters. So even though the helicopter doesn't really count as an air unit, it's a land unit that hovers, the Mobile Sam site still does bonus damage against it. And it has... Um, 100 interception which basically means if we look here oh, it's not actually going to tell you um but interception basically is the chance it has to be uh shot down by interceptors and aircraft and things like that so the um rockets can actually be shot down by certain aircraft it's a bit of a weird mechanic but it, it's what's basically used when you use your fighters as an interceptor to basically go out and try and goad the um, enemy anti-air into firing at you um, again this is another unit that I'd like to demonstrate at some point so if I ever do another video where I manage to go to war with someone um, but as you can see mobile SAM units can intercept and shoot at enemy aircraft bombing targets within two hexes but only one unit per turn uh, they are fairly vulnerable to non-air attack and should be accompanied by infantry armor because, yeah, they do have quite, you know, they only have a combat strength of 65. They're quite weak. Um, but if any enemy unit flies within two hexes of them, um, they're going to take heavy damage from those mobile SAMs. So there we go. That's pretty much all I can do on that turn. We're now into turn 402. The year is 1982 AD. We're doing fairly well on the technology tree here. As you can see, we've only got a couple of things left to research in the Atomic Era. I am going to have to, of course, complete penicillin and ecology uh, and telecommunications. But then, once I've got nuclear fission, I can research advanced ballistics. Advanced ballistics will allow me to build the uh, SS boosters. And I need to make three of those. So, we've already got the cockpit. We're working on the stasis chamber. Um, in... What, 8, 9, 10, 11 turns, we'll be able to start building the boosters, and we need three of those. And then all we need to do then is get our way through to particle physics, and we can build the engine. So, you may wonder, once you've completed all of this, what's the point in going into future tech? Future tech is basically just a points thing. Once you've completed the tech tree, all of your research goes into future tech. Uh, every X number of turns you complete future tech, you get a massive bulk load of points and then you can research future tech again and again and again and every time you research it you just get more and more points so that's just basically to, to get a points victory we should be quite high as you can see it shows you here on the science victory we've completed our apollo project and we have built the cockpit so we're doing very very well and if we just go into score into details it, yeah we are on the top now we're still only just just over 200 points ahead of Shaka, but all of Shaka's points are coming from the fact that he's got so much land. Um, everybody else, we've got quite a healthy lead on, so it's safe to say we've won this game. I don't want to jinx it, but I, I can't see it going wrong from here on out. So, once again, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and I hope you're enjoying the series. And as always, if you've got any questions, either send me a message or leave it in the comments. I don't know the answers to everything, but even if I don't, I do my best to uh, look it up and find out for you. So until next time, goodbye for now.